At the close of the Second World War, circa 1940s, in an effort to strengthen Europe's dwindling contribution to science, a handful of scientists came together to form an atomic physics laboratory. Their efforts would seek to increase international collaboration in research and shared cost. The first resolution was established creating the European Council for Nuclear Research, consisting of 11 countries. It was known under the acronym CERN. Raoul Daughtry, Pierre Auger, and Luke Kowarski in France, Eduardo Amaldi in Italy, and Niels Bohr in Denmark were among these pioneers. CERN is also credited with its contributions to forming the World Wide Web through a project called Inquire, which would make exchanging these ideas easier. In 1955, Felix Bloch, CERN's Director General, laid the first foundation stone, the location of which is Geneva, Switzerland, which shares a border with France, Italy, Germany, and Austria. Most of CERN's facilities are located in a commune of France called saint genis Pouillet. However, according to rumors, this area used to be an old Roman city called Apoliacum, dedicated to the god Apollyon. There's not much evidence to suggest this is true, but there are reasons why people are led to believe it is. According to a theory put forth by physicist Peter Higgins in 1964, there is an invisible, universe-wide field that caused the Big Bang and gave rise to all matter. Here's what CERN's website says. You and everything is made up of particles, but when the universe began, no particles had mass. They all sped around at the speed of light. Stars, Planets and life could only emerge because particles gained mass from a fundamental field called the Higgins bosom. The proof of this field, they say, is the discovery of the Higgs bosom, a large mass 120 times that of a proton. It is the second heaviest particle known today and the only particle without an angular spin. However, it has a short lifespan and immediately decays or transforms into other particles. This means that it cannot be found in nature, and its proof of existence can only be verified by producing it in a lab. To satisfy their efforts, CERN built a high-energy particle colliding machine called the Large Hadron Collider, or LHC. It lies in a tunnel 27 kilometers, which is 17 miles long, and 175 meters, which is 574 feet deep. Inside this particle accelerator, Two beams are pointed at one another, firing particles that are so tiny that they are the size of a needle. However, their charge is so powerful that scientists began putting forth concerns about the dangers of using such a high energy machine and its effect on the universe. Unbeknownst to most society, CERN had a premise that the use of a super collider had the power to open a door to other dimensions. Former Director of Research and Scientific Computing, Sergio Bertolucci, admitted that although it may be a tiny lapse of time, it may be just enough to peer into a door either by getting something out of it or sending something into it. In the 1980s, the United States government, along with Europe and China, invested billions of dollars into research based on that theory, that if enough energy was used with enough force concentrated in a small area, a door could be opened to other dimensions by pricking a small pin-sized hole. The collisions were often aligned with the solar flares from the sun that would charge the ground current a hundred times more than the Earth's magnetic field. This would implode the magnetic shield and allow radiation to come through. This would also result in weather modifications and earthquakes. Physicist Stephen Hawking stated in a book, Starmus, that the God particle may end up destroying the universe by creating microscopic black holes that would decay the Earth from the inside. British astronomer Sir Martin Rees agreed that it may indeed open a Pandora's box and unleash high energy, strange matters that are unstable, causing a vacuum decay that will lead to the collapse of space and time. Some speculate that this will be the reason the infamous Wormwood will be allowed to fall to Earth, while others deny it will destroy the universe. Only a select number of scientists called the family were privy to the project's true intentions. The rest of the scientists and the public were led to believe that they were simply trying to understand the beginning of the universe by recreating the Big Bang. People, however, began noticing strange dealings surrounding the site at CERN. For one, there was a statue of the Hindu god Shiva, the god of destruction, erected outside the facility. The statue symbolized Shiva doing a cosmic dance called Tandava. He is seen dancing with a cyclical closed arch of flames symbolically representing the cosmic fire that in Hindu cosmology creates everything and consumes everything. People sought to know what that had to do with science. 
Furthermore, people began noting Celtic mythology that speaks of Cernunos, or Cern for short. He was praised as the god of nature and fertility and often seen with horns. In Italian witchcraft, Cernunos is a star god, with a brother Lupus, the wolf god, who when he died left behind a skin that had a power to turn man into wolf. Upon his brother's death, Cern became the god of this world. For that reason, and his depiction of having antlers and horns, he was likened to Baphomet. If that wasn't enough, during times where CERN would practice their particle colliding, strange things were seen in the sky above the facility that was said to look like a portal opening up above it. This led to discussions about Revelation 9-11, which identifies Apollyon as the angel of the bottomless pit. When the pit was open, the earth was plagued with locusts that were like horses but with the face of men, hair like women, and the tails of scorpions with the power to sting and torment the earth for five months. Apollyon was their king. Rituals were often seen being performed inside the facility, and at one time, it was even being investigated for the supposed mock sacrifices that were being performed on the grounds. What is interesting is that it has also been said to be the place where the devil lives. Now, Revelation 2 makes reference to knowing the place where Satan lives, saying this, And to the angel of this church in Pergamos write, these things saith he, which has the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thy dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. And thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in the days where Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwells. According to traditional history, Antipas was martyred during the reign of Nero by burning in a brazen bull-shaped altar at the Apollyon Temple in Geneva, Switzerland. Now, Pergamum is in the location of Turkey. Turkey joined CERN's efforts in 2015, agreeing to make an even bigger vacuum chamber called Future Circular Collider to replace CERN's LHC. It will be 100 kilometers long and 200 and 300 meters deep. Is this all a coincidence? Did you know that the Super Collider isn't the only thing hidden underground?